Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again to the Self-Improvement Basis for Community Development Talk Show. I'm your weekly host, Brother James Muhammad, and I'm honored to have back on the show my friend, Dr. Jerry Bobo. Thank you, sir, for having me. Star. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome back to the show. Thank you. Well, today we'd like to discuss a uh, few things that is going on with Fresh Start. First of all, for those who are not quite familiar with you, who is Dr. Jerry Bobo and what is Fresh Start? <laughs> you ask such good questions. I'm uh, a Miffian, published author, motivational speaker, have uh, various degrees from education to psychology, even to theology. And Fresh Start is, uh, has five areas of concentration, faith, family, finances, fitness, and focus. And we're just an empowerment group, and our job is to educate, motivate, and stimulate individuals to go and be a little bit better than they currently are. Okay, and now, there are many uh, uh, life coaches out there. Yes, sir. Uh, motivational speakers. What makes Fresh Start different from any of those others, and how can the Greater Memphis community benefit? Well, not to knock the others, and I'm sure there are, there are powerful life coaches and other organizations out there, but I believe the thing that sets Dr. Jerry Bobo and Fresh Start apart from the rest is we don't only inspire, but we have to have individuals to perspire. In other words, it doesn't do you any good to get goosebumps and chills mm -hmm. and feel good, but not actually go out and do good. So with our motivation and inspiration, we have curriculums, we have budgets, we have finances, we have uh, programs in place that will hold an individual accountable. See, I can read a Tony Robbins book or listen to Les Brown, and that's good. I mean, inspiration is like a shower. You need it daily. But more so than that, we have to go out and work. You know, even the Bible says faith without works is dead. So that's what Fresh Start focuses on, is actually the going out and doing of a thing versus just talking about it. Okay, and now you're also an author. But first, before we get into your book, yes, Personalities sir. and Relationship, what inspired you to uh, come into the institution of finance, to study finance? Well, my story, I, I grew up in a two-parent home, uh, upper middle class, so I don't have a sad story of, you know, drugs or single parents or anything like that. But with that, my parents own businesses, but they never taught me that I should own a business. I know that would seem strange, but they owned the business, but never told me I should own one. Obviously, they had to have good credit to maintain their lifestyle, but ironically, they never taught me or my brother the importance of credit. So it wasn't until I got out on my own and had got all the cards that they send you. You know, when you're in college, you know, you discover cards uh -oh. and uh, visas, and you know, you don't really understand. I didn't really understand finance. It's like, okay, all I saw was $5,000 limit and 25 dollars a month at 19 20 who wouldn't do that right well i didn't understand that that was the interest and that that five thousand dollar credit card i would be paying for for the rest of my life and i didn't realize that the fact that i was late on that little 25 dollar payment would cause me to have to have higher interest rates on a car payment so here i am paying six seven hundred dollars for a car note that should have been three hundred dollars and so because of uh, me having to file bankruptcy at an early age, uh, because of me uh, going out and experiencing my co-signer needing a co-signer, it became a personal mission of mine to educate people about finances and credit. Okay, now speaking of parents and children, and for my audience, for those who are just now tuning in, I'm sitting here with our brother from Fresh Start, Dr. Jerry Bobo, and we're discussing financial responsibility. Absolutely. When should we start teaching financial responsibility in the home? The moment your child asks you for something. <laughs> the, the, the moment your child can say, buy me. Mm -hmm. The moment your child says, daddy, I want. Mama, I want. At that very moment, he or she is more than capable of understanding finances. It should start at that very moment. Children uh, today especially have a sense of entitlement. They don't really understand how money works. They, they believe that Air Jordans just come out the blue. They believe that PlayStation 4s or Wii's are, are uh, some things that they are entitled to. They don't understand that these things should be worked for and more importantly earned. And so what I would do is teach my child not only the value of a dollar, but the value of having to not work for that dollar. See, our people in particular have been programmed since the beginning of time to work for money. And where has that gotten us? Further behind. Every year our race in particular gets further and further behind financially. And it's because we have not 
yet got accustomed to the idea that money should be working for us versus us working for money. Okay, now, uh, what are some of the mistakes you see that we make in our homes as it relates to finance? When you talk about the mic Michael Jordans and the PlayStation and the telephone, what are some of the mistakes that we make with our children and with our sales? It, it, it's a mentality mistake. I, I say it this way. I can help a person that's broke mm -hmm. because broke is temporary, you know, meaning I, I may reach in my pocket now and, and only feel my leg. But I got a paycheck coming Friday. Mm -hmm. So that, that broke situation changes instantly. But poor, P-O-O-R, that's a mentality, almost a curse, so to speak. And we say that poor simply stands for passing over opportunities repeatedly. Say that one more time now. <laughs> poor, P-O-O-R, passing over opportunities repeatedly. So if I have the opportunity to buy a $200 pair of Air Jordans and a $500 PlayStation 3, well, that's $700. I could take $700 and start a small home-based business that would be able to allow me to buy several pairs of Air Jordans, several PlayStation consoles, but we have a tendency to do it wrong. We put our pleasures and wants first versus our needs and our assets. And a lot of times in our communities, we just don't understand the difference. A liability is probably 97% of the things we purchase. Well, you may say, well, Doc, what's a liability? Quite simply, anything that you purchase that depreciates in value. Spinning rims, liability. TVs in the headrest, liability. A $500 purse without $500 in the purse, a liability. Alligator shoes that's just sitting on the shelf. Well, are you wearing them to a board meeting? Are you wearing them to, to the bank? To acquire a business loan or a line of credit, or are you wearing them to the club, to the movies, or downtown to impress other broke folk? Okay. Hmm. Well, now, Fresh Start. I believe you named four disciplines that you work with. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit something about those disciplines and also Fresh Start and what inspired you to move towards this more of a ministry or, well, you, you might mm -hmm. not like the word ministry, mm -hmm. but. Or well, ministry just simply, ministry just simply means to serve. And, and, yeah, and as you said, I, I don't particularly care for I don't particularly care for the word because it's misconstrued. It, okay. it has a bad connotation. Right. Uh, for the most part, you know, when you hear the word ministry, you think of somebody passing a bucket around okay. or, or a plate, you know, give, give, give. But that's not what ministry is. Again, the, the word minister means to serve. And that's the problem in our community that we're being taken away from so much. No one is serving us, but we're continually doing the serving and we're ending up last every time. Hmm, interesting. Now, okay, if I decide that I would like to uh, learn more about Fresh Start, what is the f first step should I take? Um, you can send me an email. My email address is help at drjerrybobo.com, help at d-r-j-e-r-r-y-b-o-b-o.com. Uh, we answer all emails, all responses. We will never get so big where you're going to get an automated response. You know, because sometimes people just, in my opinion, you know, nobody's that busy. You know, when you get so busy that you can't serve the people, get in another business. Does that make sense? That so makes sense. That, would, that would be the first line of defense to just simply send us an email and uh, give us your contact information. We'll be more than glad to contact you back and answer any questions that an individual may have. Okay, now you also have different events and Absolutely. meeting places where you work with people on their finance. Tell us a little bit something about that. Um, every other Saturday we hold what's something called Success School. And we do this via the telephone. We also can do it online with live streams or physical meetings depending on...